Alright, welcome back to another video today. Today we're going to be reacting to Can China Defend Off a U.S. Evasion? And like I said in my previous videos, I think I'm sick. So, you know, bear with me right now. Alright, let's get into it. The United States, the world's premier military power. China, a rising power that may one day be able to challenge the U.S.'s own, but today cannot. What if these two military giants went head to head though, and the conflict played out on China's own shores? What if the United States decided it needed to invade China? Could China defend from a US invasion? First though, is conflict between the two even probable? The short answer is yes, and the possibility is frighteningly real and seemingly only growing more realistic by the day. Today, these two great powers find themselves locked in what historians have come to term Thucydides' trap. Thucydides was an ancient Greek historian who commented on the rise of Athens and the fall of Sparta. For a long time, Sparta was the reigning power of the Greek world, until the city-state of Athens began to rival it in terms of economy, wealth, and military power. The end result was an inevitable war between the two city-states and their allies, as one side, Sparta, sought to hold on to its spot as the number one power, and Athens sought to dislodge it. If you think that's ancient history, then consider that out of 16 instances in just the last 500 years alone of a rising power supplanting a pre-existing power, war broke out 12 out of 16 times. Mm -hmm. Clearly, the odds are not good that the US and China can avoid war. To make matters worse, the seeds of conflict between the two nations already exist in a variety of potential flashpoints. The biggest of these are Taiwan's continued independence and China's aggressive and illegal expansion into the South Pacific. Eventually, most likely due to the matter of Taiwan, a conflict between the US and China is likely, especially if China wants to prove it really is a great power. As long as the US Navy reigns supreme in the South Pacific, China cannot claim to be a great power and cannot influence its neighbors the way it wishes to. For China, conflict with the US is all but inevitable, not just a matter of national pride, but one of continued political survival for a communist party that finds itself increasingly isolated from the outside world by growing democratic movements along its borders. So what if the worst came to worse? Could the US successfully invade China? The US's greatest asset is the presence of its forces all around the world thanks to defense agreements with partners and allies. This is a mutually beneficial agreement as it provides a boost to the hosting nation's economy and ensures its continued defense in the case of a war. For the US though, it has the added benefit of allowing it to stage forces all around the world and quickly react to a conflict. American forces- Yeah, that really is good though. Hey, he just right there question for you. Room with their wide network of military installations and partnerships with nations all over the globe allow them a degree of flexibility and mobility that no other nation can even come close to matching. In a war against China, the US would rely on its specific bases to prosecute the conflict. Spurred on by China's growing aggressiveness against its neighbors in the South Pacific, President Obama launched a strategy of encirclement, much like that employed so successfully against the Soviet Union during the Cold War. Today, this means that US forces are deployed or can deploy from bases in Japan, the Philippines, Guam, South Korea, Singapore, Australia, and even Thailand. Plotted on a map, this clearly shows how American military power is posed to contain China no matter in which direction it attempts to move its own military. The reverse is also true. The wide dispersion of US power Pacific allows it to use military force against China from multiple avenues of approach, forcing Chinese defenses to spread out amongst a host of potential threat vectors. However, the primary purpose of US encirclement is not to start hostilities, but rather to respond to them or prevent them altogether. China's chief strategic problem is that it relies on overseas routes for most of its trade, with up to 60% of all Chinese trade passing through the South Pacific. Current US force predisposition has the foot in the US military poised straight on the jugular of Chinese trade, and it would not take much pressure to shut that trade off and send China into an economic collapse. In case of war, this is exactly what would happen. US forces would immediately begin a naval and air blockade of all Chinese trade, boxing in the Chinese Navy all the way from the Malacca Straits to the Sea of Japan. While the Chinese Navy now for the first time in history outnumbers the US's own Navy, it largely lacks a capability to operate far from its own shores and is best suited for coastal defense. This would make it impossible for China to send a naval expeditionary force to the Malacca Straits and secure them for its trade ships. Then there's the added complication of US allies and partners in the area who would indubitably join the US side in the conflict. 
Chinese ships trying to leave their territorial waters would find themselves threatened on all sides on top of having to deal with the formidable American Pacific Fleet. At the same time that the U.S. ships are blocking off Chinese trade, though, the People's Liberation Army rocket force would saturate U.S. bases in Guam, South Korea, Japan, and possibly even the Philippines. These attacks would overwhelm American missile defenses and cause considerable damage, requiring weeks of repair to bring them back into operational status. This huge missile volley would greatly delay U.S. offensive operations. Right this moment, Initiative there is a mad rush in America. Apple, Amazon, Facebook, they that, dozens they more. They do that, operations do by that. both its air and naval fleets, not to mention the preparation of any sort of invasion force. However, it would also greatly anger the nations that host U.S. forces, as missiles like the DF-21 ballistic missile have a margin of error that can be as much as several hundred meters. Missiles would be destroying not just U.S. forces, but also Japanese, South Korean, and Filipino military assets and even civilians. This would further cement support for U.S. action against China. The Chinese missile stockpile numbers in the thousands, but it is ultimately finite, and military facilities can always be repaired faster than missile stockpile can be replenished. Not to mention that long before a second volley can be fired, U.S. forces would have moved to heavily damage China's command and control assets. In the opening of the war, American stealth bombers would strike at Chinese long-range surveillance radar, command and control nodes, and precision military systems deep inside the country. These attacks would be mirrored by a missile barrage nearly as large as China's own being launched by America's large submarine fleet, most of which are capable of carrying long-range land attack cruise missiles. While China may be able to hold the U.S. surface navy at bay with its rocket forces for a few weeks, possibly even a few months, the U.S. submarine force would be impossible to target with those same rocket forces. And given China's extreme lack of anti-submarine warfare assets, the American silent service would all but have the run of China's coast. American stealth aircraft and submarine forces would continue striking deep into China, destroying air defense networks, satellite communication nodes, and other vital facilities for coordinating China's ability to threaten the American Navy. U.S. stealth bomber losses would no doubt be very high, potentially knocking the entire fleet of 20 U.S. B-2 bombers out of commission within the first few weeks. Air attacks would then have to rely on unmanned drones supplemented by submarine cruise missile strikes, but eventually Chinese defenses would be eroded enough to allow B-1 and even B-52 strategic bombers to begin to soften up Chinese coastal defenses. Going any further inland would likely be fatal for B-1 and B-52s, even at this stage of the war, with the Chinese Air Force suppressed but very much still capable. Escorting those non-stealthy bombers, however, would be American F-22 Raptors and F-35s, which would operate from repaired facilities in Japan and South Korea. While the U.S. would suffer losses to both its F-22 and F-35 fleets, the loss ratio would be extremely favorable. After a few weeks of air operations, enough of China's air defenses and most of its formidable fighter aircraft would have been thinned out to allow non-stealthy U.S. Air Force F-15s and Navy F-18s to join the fight considerably boosting the presence of American combat aircraft. American air forces are not just more capable than China's, but considerably larger as well, with 13,264 total aircraft versus China's 3,210. Of those aircraft, the U.S. operates nearly double as many combat aircraft as China, at 2,085 versus 1,232. To make matters worse for China, U.S. aircraft are overwhelmingly more modern and capable, and its pilots more experienced. China may have the home field advantage, but the U.S. would dominate the air and sea war within a few months, putting a stranglehold on China economically. In the real world, this is the limit of the U.S.'s plans for a war with China. Destroy its navy and air force and strangle it economically into submission. In today's scenario, though, we're taking this a step further. Preparation for an invasion of China would take many months and require the mustering of most of the U.S.'s amphibious forces. If the U.S. wanted to gather an invasion force and maintain its global commitments as they stand today, it would need to institute a national draft, which could potentially see it add up to 145 million additional personnel to its military. However, China's 1.3 billion strong population could muster up a defensive force of 753 million. Though with its much smaller military budget, a floundering economy due to the U.S.'s stranglehold on its trade, and damage on its infrastructure caused by American air and naval attacks, China would only realistically be able to train up and equip a small percentage of this number. Likewise, the U.S. would only be able to equip a small percentage of its own reservists, leaving the numbers advantage firmly in Chinese hands. 
The US has always had the capability to move forces around in large numbers relatively fast, but in recent years it's greatly increased its expeditionary capabilities, adding a number of mobile landing platforms, afloat forward staging bases, and amphibious assault ships. Today, the US maintains three marine expeditionary forces, its primary force dedicated to kicking down the door on hostile beaches all over the world. Each force can bring to an enemy's shore between 20,000 and 90,000 marines and sailors. These would quickly be supplemented by US Army expeditionary forces, though they would require longer to assemble, prepare, and transport to a hostile Chinese beach. Initially, the American marines would be forced to hold the beach alone, though they would not be able to land in their full numbers all at the same time. Not wishing to spread themselves too thin, and with US air and naval power only capable of carving out a very small slice of safety on hostile Chinese beaches, US forces may at best approach the numbers of the amphibious assault in Normandy, averaging between 15,000 and 20,000 personnel per day. This Damn. would require a full three and a half days for an entire Marine expeditionary force to make the beach. This would leave 20,000 Marines with the unenviable task of holding a narrow strip of beach against a People's Liberation Army of around 975,000, not counting reservists right and there. conscripts. Even with air superiority achieved, US and Allied aircraft could not hope to hold at bay the vast number of Chinese ground troops, and it's likely that even before the first Marine Expeditionary Force could completely offload onto the beach, the Marines holding them would have been thrown back out into the ocean. Sheer numbers Damn. alone make an invasion of the Chinese mainland completely impossible for even the technologically yeah, superior so US, people. and it would require the unloading of an entire Marine Expeditionary Force in one single landing to secure a foothold against the vast numbers of the Chinese People's Liberation Army. This is precisely why the United States has no plans of invading China, and instead plans on simply destroying the Chinese Navy and Air Force while blockading it economically in the case of war. Want to find out how the U.S. Navy plans to defeat China? Why? Man, that's crazy. It's just like, if they do this, then they gonna do that. Like, it's just going back and forth. But, yeah. But these scenarios, you know, it, it can always go either way. Because you don't know how, you know, stuff plays over time and stuff like that. But, yeah, if you like this video, like and subscribe for more content. And I'll see you on the next one. Cross. Heard them lasers talking now that we don't pay that no mind Didn't need to watch and know that I'll be hearing no